All right, going to do a video showing the actual Jesuit connections and propagation of the occult Illuminati heathen high day of Saturnalia, also called Christ Mass by the Jesuit pagans. So I'm going to show this article, these couple articles of Jesuits promoting this holiday. You got to love it when you got false teachers like Brian Dunninger who are vehemently against the Jesuits who actually are promoting a Jesuit holiday. Interesting that, that little uh, connection there, that interesting little phenomenon there. Uh, but this is on the jesuit.org.au. This is the Australian Jesuits. A Christmas message. Australian Jesuit provincial, you know, father, call no man father, Matthew chapter 23, verse 29, reflects on the meaning of Christmas and why we remember this sacred event each year. Well, I don't, and neither does any Bible-believing Christian who understands scripture. Okay, you can be carnal and, and, and observe this custom ignorantly. But once you've been shown, shown the truth and if you reject it, then it's your problem at that point. He says, uh, let me just zoom in on this. Many times throughout history, God has spoken and his word, capital W, you know, every time you have capital W word of God in the scriptures, it's always referring to Jesus Christ. But of course, the Jesus Christ of the Jesuit order is not the Jesus Christ of the Bible. The Jesus Christ of the Jesuits is the Antichrist. They're not the society of Jesus Christ, they're the society of the Antichrist. Continuing. Has been fulfilled. God spoke and the world came into being. God spoke and humanity was created. God spoke and a child was born. We remember the sacred event each year on Christmas Day. The Word became flesh and was is with us. When baby Jesus first arrived more than 2,000 years ago, this birth fulfilled God's promise. Now, they're saying it's about Jesus Christ's birth. Okay, show me in scripture where Jesus Christ was born on December 25th. There's no scripture that says that. You know, please give me a book, chapter, and verse. Of course, the Jesuits don't believe the Bible because they have all their heathen Catholic Jesuit traditions they follow that just trump scripture. But if you're a Bible-believing Bible Christian out there, if this is about the birth of Jesus Christ, please give me a chapter and verse that says he was born on December 25th. It's not in there. You have to basically add to scripture and twist God's word to teach this lie. Throughout history, humanity has lived un in uncertainty and failed to know God. At times we have been faithful to God, and other times we have turned our back on God's grace, even turned against God. Well, the Jesuits never had God's grace to begin with, because they're a bunch of lying Luciferian Satanists. That simple. You may think I'm being too harsh. Really, when you look at the inner workings of the Jesuits, I challenge you, if you think I'm being too harsh, I challenge you to actually read the secret instructions of the Jesuits. Go buy yourself a copy of that, and just see that the Jesuits are uh, murderous, bloodthirsty people. You know, they actually were started and they actually were, were, you know, sent out to assassinate political leaders, to assassinate kings who would stand against the Pope. I mean, believe me, just again, read the Jesuit handbook, just read the Jesuit, uh, the secret handbook, secret instructions of the Jesuits, and you'll see the kind of murderous, bloodthirsty cult that they are. You know, it's that simple. They, so if you think I'm being too harsh, no, I'm, I'm rebuking these murderous, bloodthirsty cult members because they are wicked people. Believe me, they may, they may appear all nice on the outside, but inwardly they're a bunch of rotten devils who would literally stick a, stick a pike on your head, stick your head on a pike if you spoke against them, if they had that kind of power. They'd stick your head on a pike for for blaspheming the Antichrist Pope. Okay? So yeah, just, like, just in case you think I'm being too harsh. Uh, what is it? To fulfill God's promise, God has sent into the world a Redeemer, who has shown us the merciful grace of God. By the grace of the Father and the Holy Spirit through Jesus, we are set free from bondage. Through the reconciling of Jesus Christ, we are restored before the Lord as a holy people. Well, if you're a Catholic, you have to take the Mass, you have to get baptized, you have to do works, you have to confess your sins to a priest, you have to do all these other things. So it's not just Jesus Christ alone, it's Jesus Christ plus all your heathen man-made traditions. So, see this kind of double speak, kind of this subtle the subtle lies from the jesuit order they don't actually believe this the birth of jesus reminds us that god has not abandoned us well your god hasn't your god's the antichrist reminds us that god loves us uh, immeasurably he humbled himself taking on a human condition to be like us in all things except sin this event reminds us that god stooped down so that we can reach out to him with praise and thanksgiving for the gift of redemption well again if you're a catholic you don't have that option there because you have you believe the salvation through jesus christ but not through jesus christ alone because you have to go through mary to, as an intercessor you have to take the sacraments you have to get baptized you have to attend mass you have to basically eat jesus christ every single week at mass so you don't believe in just jesus christ you believe in jesus christ plus all your heathen traditions to justify yourself before god that's what i'm getting at there and again if you think i'm being too harsh just simply read the jesuit secret instructions of the jesuit and you'll see how the kind of wicked cult they are 
Now, and then now that we are easing out of COVID-19 restrictions, yeah, the Jesuits caused it, by the way, which I'm not going to say too much because I'll be getting a strike for that. Uh, we are invited to return to our church, parish, and community to celebrate the Eucharist together. Pope Francis has reminded us that individual prayer cannot replace meetings and community prayer, neither can online masses replace face-to-face -face ones. Furthermore, the Pope suggested that we, quote, find positive ways to provide pastoral care and be close to the flock. Oh yeah, talk about all those little altar boys where they're getting close to the priest and that, you know, that them getting close, you know, they get close to the point of, you know, inappropriate situation to the point where the priest is getting so close he's touching them. If that's too real for you, that's just, that's what goes on. You know, they're, they're getting close in the pastoral care, close enough to where the priest can touch them. Seriously, again, if you think I'm being too harsh, just look at, again, just, there's all kinds of, I mean, thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of priests have been busted touching little boys, you know, engaging in homosexuality, uh, abortion, fornication, all that stuff. It is a satanic cult. It is Mystery Babylon, described in Revelation chapter 17 and 18. So if you think I'm being too harsh, just read about all the millions of Christians they've killed throughout the, the ages. The Dark Ages, the Inquisitions. You know, me saying some, some offensive things does not even compare, even in the slightest fraction of a remote way, to the untold millions of, of people they've murdered for rejecting the Pope's authority and holding to scripture alone. But, continuing. Oops, my different full screen. Um, let us pray to Jesus who came in the world to be with us, to show us the way of the Father. Let us pray that we continue to find new ways of being community with one another post the pandemic in our family or at work, wherever it is with confidence and with compassion. Wishing you a holy Christmas and a blessed new year. Yeah. Again, the Jesuit order, the satanic cult, you know, promoting this, this heathen uh, Illuminati high day of Saturnalia. Not surprising one bit. Now I'm going to show this other article. Again, showing the Jesuit connections to this whole thing. It must be really hard for some of Brian Dillinger's followers, because if you're so against the Jesuits, what are you doing observing their customs? You know, had to just slip that in there because he, his cult is really, really wicked. They're, they're more Catholic than they think. Just after, this is uh, from homilies of a Jesuit at blogspot.com. The Christmas, this is their Christmas homily on this Jesuit blog. Just after we began our Mass, we heard a solemn proclamation from the birth of Christ. It gave us a great sweep of history as it pointed us to the events that took place from the time of the creation until the birth of Christ. It is not a history that is historical in a strict scientific sense of the word. Nevertheless, it is history because it chronicles the history of salvation. Yeah, the salvation that the Roman Catholics and Jesuits don't have. Because they don't believe that the blood of Jesus Christ alone cleanses all your sins, as per Acts 13 39, uh, Colossians 2 13, I believe it is, Titus 2 14, and 1 John chapter 1 verse 7. They don't believe that. They believe that their sacraments, their confessions to a priest, their prayers to Mary, their baptism, all this other stuff is what brings them salvation. So when they talk about salvation, they're not talking about salvation through Jesus Christ. They're talking about salvation through their pagan cult, known as Roman Catholicism. Uh, where was I at? Or, yeah. Amongst the events, one of them took place about 700 years before the birth of Christ. The kingdom of Judah was facing external and the external threat. God sent the prophet Isaiah to encourage King Ahaz to, to trust God for protection and not to form an un unholy alliance with Assyria. God even offered Ahaz the chance to ask for a sign in order to strengthen his faith, but, faith, but Ahaz refused. Not only that, Ahaz also refused to obey God. Unfortunately, Ahaz, Ahaz's disobedience to God's moment to proclaim, uh, th to proclaim through Isaiah's a prophecy, which is fulfilled according to the Gospel of Matthew. And of course, they quote from their Vatican version, so I'm not even going to bother reading that. Uh, this is what they say. Christmas is the fulfillment of God's promise to be with us in a way that is beyond humanity's expectation. Uh, chapter and verse, where does the word Christmas appear in Scripture? Okay, the birth of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, amen to that. But first of all, where is it on December 25th? Like, like they're basically celebrating this heathen holiday on. And where is it called Christmas? You know, like Law of First Mention. Let me just, you know, Law of First Mention. I, I've been taught, you know, Christmas doesn't appear in this book. Okay. The word Christmas comes from, the, let me just make sure I'm full screen. No, I'm not. I was saying the word Christmas does not appear in this book right here. This, the word of God. So where does it come from? It comes from the word Christ Mass. What does Christ Mass mean? The Mass of Christ. What does that mean? When you're saying Merry Christmas, you're basically saying Merry Christ Mass. The Mass of Christ is basically a celebration of his death, and you're basically eating his body supposedly every single week. So when you're saying Merry Christmas, you're saying Merry Christ Mass. 
which is basically blasphemy, because you're you're making an ungodly light of his death. That simple. And this book nowhere anywhere says Christmas is the fulfillment of God's promise. Again, show me show me anywhere, show me a chapter and verse anywhere in this book that says that Christmas is God's promise to fulfill the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. It's not in there. That simple. That, you know, again, I, I have my criticisms of Martin Luther, but he was right, you know, that the Catholics, he was right by saying we should go by scripture alone, which is what the Catholics don't do. The Jesuits don't do that. But again, I'm not going to read this whole thing. Uh, you can read it. I'll, I might link it in the description. But they're basically saying that Christmas is the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, look at this. This is called the Huron Carol. This is actually not far from where I my uh, my cottages are in Lake Huron. I, you know, I, I go to Sawa Beach occasionally. I have some vlogs on there. Uh, it's on Lake Huron. And look at this, the Huron Carol. The Huron Carol, Twas in the Moon Winter Time, is a Canadian Christmas hymn, Canada's oldest Christmas song, written probably in 1642 by Jean D. Bar Brébeuf. It, 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 excuse my French, I'm not good at, I'm just not good at French. I do apologize. I was never, like when I was in school, I was never good at French class. Uh, I barely passed it, but you know, side issue. Uh, but look, look who this guy was. A Jesuit missionary at... Saint -E Mary among the Hurons in Canada. He wrote the lyrics in his native language of Huron Wendat, the song's original Huron. Basically, it's a Jesuit who wrote this this Christmas carol, and it's the oldest Christmas carol here in Canada. So those are some examples of the Jesuit connections to this occult Illuminati high day of Christmas, or Christ Mass as it should be properly called because it is not of God, that simple. And the, the Jesus Christ of Roman Catholicism is the Antichrist. Okay, I'm just gonna be blunt and brutal about it. It is not the Jesus Christ of this book right here. It's Jesus Christ of the the coming Antichrist, basically. It's, it's, the G, it's Satan's counterfeit to Jesus Christ. You know, that simple. So don't be deceived. Uh, the Christ, Christ Mass holiday, it is a pagan holiday. Let me just show you a quick little scripture, two scriptures actually, to uh, belabor this point. To go off this point a little bit more. First Kings chapter 14 verses 22 to 24. And Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they came they provoked him to jealousy with their sins that which they had committed, above all that their fathers had done. For they for they also built them high places and images and groves on every high hill and under every green tree. Hence where you get the thing of putting presents under a tree. But look at verse 24. And there were also Sodomites in the land. And they did that, and they did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. Okay, I'm going to come out and say this make make some people upset, but Christmas is a holiday of homosexuality. Because when the Israelites were doing these these heathen customs that were that were, that people now do with Christmas, you know, Sodomites were in the land too. So Christmas and homosexuality, it's it's just a holiday of homosexuals. It's a holiday of Sodomites, plain and simple. Christmas is not of God. It's a holiday of, of Jesuit sodomites. But I'm going to read this other scripture in Jeremiah chapter 10. The infamous Jeremiah 10, which I, I've showed in other videos. It is talking about Christmas trees. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2 to 4. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen, with the axe they deck it with silver and with gold, they fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. If you don't think that's not about a Christmas tree, uh, you're nuts, plain and simple. It's blatantly talking about a Christmas tree. They cut it out of the woods, they, they deck it with gold and silver. Okay, it's not talking about carving an idol. I mean, give me a break. It's talking about cutting a tree and decking it in gold and silver. You know, today it would be called ornaments, Christmas ornaments. And, and they put a star on top of it too. You know, they call it the extreme pagan significance of that, putting like the star of Moloch on top of it. So don't be deceived. Christmas is a Jesuit holiday that comes from Saturnalia, the Illuminati high day of Saturnalia. So if you're a Christian, you ought to have nothing to do with Christmas. It's a, I mean, the fact that the Jesuits are promoting it is it's already bad enough, but I, I can show you, I, I have shown in past videos, the pagan origins and the blatant, obvious occult origins of Christmas as well. So, yeah, if you're a Bible believer, you ought to have nothing to do with Christmas. Plus, I show it from Scripture, too, that it's against God. From word, from, the, from God's Word, but also from history as well. So, anyway, don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.